Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening right now. Carlos King, e. I have a bone to pick with you, and I'm going to tell you why in a few. <laughs> but Love and Marriage Huntsville, this is one of my favorite non-scripted shows that we do over here on this channel. If you all came back from the previous season, which is still season one, thank you for coming back. E. We got a whole lot to chop it up about, okay? If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free 99. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up or thumbs down. It doesn't even matter. At this point, you've already been counted. You know? Mm -hmm. So, Carlos, let me go ahead and get this bone picked with you right off the bat. <laughs> what we're not fitting to do is make this show about the whole Holtz. I don't want to talk about the Holtz and their marriage and his way with Dick. <laughs> Every episode. I know that should that just sounds wrong of me, but I want it to be more about the comeback group. Yeah. About everyone's marriages collectively and not so focused on this here right here. Yeah. Alright. Let's go ahead and talk about some real life stuff. What's the name of it? Old Dogs New Tricks. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about the old dog and the new trick. All right, uh, we have learned on social media, I think it was last week that Melody mm -hmm. Holt actually made it public that she is expecting a baby. Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing. Me and my girl, Really B, from Really B TV, right after we did the trailer, when we did the reaction to the trailer a few months ago, we got a little bug put in our ear from some people down in Huntsville. That was like, uh, y'all know she's pregnant in real life, right? It was like, mm. wait, say what now? So, so we were what? really trying to figure out how this was going to play out. Because I'm like, if she, and they even told us how many months she was and all of this. And how the hell do y'all know this? Yeah. <laughs> but I was trying to figure out, like, how is she going to hide this and have this show to come on? So the first thing that I said was maybe on episode one, we'll adjust the fact that there's a baby. Because... There's no way you could continue to hide a bump like that and do press for the show. Well, that's probably why she had to come out with it last week because she could no longer hide that bump. Yeah. But I think it would have been genius of you all to go ahead and put that in episode one. Kill it right off the bat. Because at this point, we kind of already know what we're looking for. Yeah, they might throw it in this week. We don't know. Well, we already know that we're there's some kind of resolve going on so much so that they don't smash and got pregnant. Yeah. So, I don't know. But let's get into it. The houses that we left off with, I keep wanting to say last season, but it's still the same season. They're being built, but the comeback group ain't really came back. Yeah, but it's good to see some progress is happening. And the houses are beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful because, no, I'm not going to say last season, but before we left the last time, there was no houses. No, just the land. <laughs> so, there is progress being made, but we learned through Kimmy that Melody Holt isn't actually returning phone calls, no responding to text messages, anything that's um to deal with this comeback group, she ain't here for it right mm -hmm. now. So they're kind of left out there in limbo, seeing progress being made, but they're not being part of that progress. And I'm like, here we go again with this comeback group that ain't came together, but stuff is being is happening. And then we try to fix everything on the back end rather than walk through it and do it together like a group should mm -hmm. do. That's why I believe like at the end of the day, everybody just need to stay in their own perspective, gifts and their callings and come together when called. Like be contractors. Yeah. Because at this point this group thing isn't working. Let's go ahead and talk about Kimmy and Maurice. They are newly married. Of course y'all saw they had a beautiful um, wedding on a yacht. On a yacht. Um, Kimmy looks married. Like, uh, she has the glow of a married woman. I mean, she's she is wearing marriage well. Well, they haven't went on a honeymoon yet because Maurice is still in school. So, they haven't had the time to be able to do so. So, in the meantime, he found a safari out there in Huntsville. And he took her to a safari. <laughs> she was like, this was not my so idea. this is good and all, but no. This I, ain't I, right here. I need that Paradise Island type <laughs> of honeymoon. And I need it immediately. I feel on that one. Though. Yeah. And he's, that just was a day trip. That, definitely. <laughs> and he's telling her, you know, it has to be in the right timing. And she was like, I'm going to need you to make it the right timing. Because I know how you go. This train is a moving. And I need mm -hmm. to figure out when we're going to 
and do this honeymoon because if that train keeps moving, it'll be four or five years from now mm -hmm. we ain't went on a honeymoon yet. Yeah, we need to make this happen. She said we need to make this happen this year. Hello. <laughs> and I understand when life starts happening, sometimes it is hard yeah. to stop and do something because you just think, okay, we still here, we doing everything mm -hmm. together. You know, it's not like we missing a beat with everything. Well, no, you gotta you gotta yeah, go and got to some, honeymoon. Yeah, something that you really wanna do, you have to plan it and put a date on the calendar. Because if it ain't planned and no date on the calendar, it ain't never going to happen. That's the truth. We've learned that. Yeah, we learned it all. I live by a calendar now. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we saw that Kimmy had gotten word that um, Melody was doing this event called Mimosas with Mel. So, she decided to go on over there and to support Melody and whatnot. And this was an event... I don't know what the actual mission, mission. of this yeah. event was, but it turned into more of a female empowerment group or a support group. I'm going to call it more of a support group. And it was dealing with women that have suffered with infidelity within their marriages and overcoming that and dealing with all that comes with that. I don't know what the mission is for it. I don't know what the mission is for mimosas with Mel. So I'm not going to speak too much on it. And for me, I'm just looking at it from the outside in and I'm like, Usually you do events like this, if that's the mission. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if the mission is dealing with people that have gone through infidelity and all of that, usually you have a definite end already mm -hmm. so that you'll know how to work forward with whoever the audience members may be. Yeah. If you're going to work through, like for instance, if the definite end is that we've decided we're going to try to make this work and we're going to walk this thing out and we're going to stay together. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the end that now we're coaching everybody else on within these groups. Yeah. If the definite end is, buck you, I'm <laughs> out, I don't want to ever see you no more, then you have a different set of attendees. So right now, I really don't know what the mission of this is, or even if this is the mission of that group. This could have been just something that was sidebar, but that was brought to the forefront as, mm -hmm. you know, maybe this is what the group was. But I don't I know. Said, I think it's more of a support thing right now. Yeah. Because she needs it's the support. In, she in yeah, it. yeah, she in it. Yeah, it ain't over. Yeah, yet. so it's not like yeah. she's <clears throat> whatever. But anywho. <laughs> so at this function, Kimmy is like her facial expressions are like, what is going on? Well, here's the deal. She was kind of a taken back, taken aback by how open and honest and transparent and vulnerable. Mel was to these complete strangers, but yet them as friends, they can't even get her to open up and talk to them and tell them anything. That's such as life, though. It is. Yeah. So every time they ask Mel something, she's like, it's good, mm -hmm. we're good, blah, 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 blah. And Kimmy went to go talk to <clears throat> Letitia, and she was like, Letitia, I really don't know how to take this thing. Because in social media, we see the pictures, we see them glammed up, they look mm -hmm. happy. But yet when I just had a conversation with her at the event... She told me that this event, um, where they had the event at, was so beautiful. Maybe she'll have her second marriage there, um, her second wedding. It's and like, she was what? like, you know, what, what do I do with this information? And then if I come out and I ask her, I'm either going to get yes or yes. We don't know which yes means what. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you know, usually when her yes is uh, da, 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 then that means that they're not doing good. But if her yes is uh, then they're doing all right. So they just in a point, in a a place in their friendship where they don't know how to take her mm -hmm. and how to or what she's truly dealing yeah, with or how to even her. support her because yeah. you really don't know how to support a friend if the friend isn't being as transparent as you need them to be because that really does kind of give you the blueprint of how you deal with it you yeah. know what I'm saying I don't want to deal with you as if everything is okay and yeah, everything not isn't okay. not isn't okay yeah you know, and I've dealt with that with friends. They'll tell you everything is okay, everything is okay, everything is okay. And then when they break down and almost to the point of no return, mm -hmm. you're like, what the bug? I've been here like every Saturday, mm -hmm. every day when you want to talk. Yep. I didn't know it was this bad. So that's where they're at. 
or they come and, and dump it all on you at one time. And then you're like, like along the way, we could you could have been, you know, pouring this on me at a little bit at a time, and yes. I could have helped you kind of walk through it. But you wait until it's all the way to the end, where well, it's totally bucked up. You know, in other words, mm -hmm. see, people don't wait to ask you for a loan when they just like one month behind their car payment. Okay. They come in when they're three months behind. They did twelve hundred dollars in the hole, and actually, can you got do you got twelve hundred dollars? You had asked me back on month one, I could have helped you with the three hundred. Yeah. But the twelve hundred, I don't know. That's a whole lot of money right there. Heck yeah. So just like a relationship, when y'all was going through, the, the, if you at one point thought he was cheating, you should have came talk to me then. Not when he start cheating, and then you want to have a divorce, and then you dump all that on me. My heart can't handle it. You cast them burdens on the Lord, not on me. Helped up. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. You can tell me stuff. <laughs> oh, girl, say, that was a whole lot. Yeah. I don't know where any of that came from, but that was a whole lot, Stanley. That was a whole lot. Yeah. So now they're, they're at a point where Kimmy is trying to be supportive of Mel because she's been accusing in the, in the past of not being as supportive as she needs her to be. So that's why she ended up at the, um, at the event. Mm -hmm. Now, Letitia was like, you know what? Why is it that it's not reciprocated hmm. and it's not dealt with the same when it isn't. We both get slapped on the wrist when it comes a time where we're not present for things that Mel feels like we should be present on. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't do any of that for us and there's nothing ever said about it. Mm -hmm. And then when she gets mad with us, she does the petty social media blasting thing. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we could post pictures of Martell's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, very quickly, if we want to play these kind of games, because we have the picture, I said, oh, Lord have mercy. I'm like, please don't do that. Hey. Well, she can slide it to our email, though. <laughs> Send it to my DMs. <laughs> but for real, for real, in order for this girl to have not been um, exposed by now, he paying her off real good. But she is really in love with him. Mm -hmm. And she thinks that they're going to be together. Because ain't no way a side chick stays that solid all this time mm -hmm. and you don't curb her and then especially after what was said hmm. and i'm gonna get to it <laughs> so letitia and marceau <sighs> letitia is back in the workforce my boy's struggling and he's struggling he's and struggling. she's struggling <laughs> so now we have two working parents Leaving the house, going to make that money, making boss moves. And they don't just have regular nine to fives. They have businesses. businesses. Yeah. And businesses really require really, more of your time than a job. Yeah, it really yeah. never stops. Trust yeah. Me, no. mm -hmm. And she needs help. <clears throat> She's doing a really good job. It seems like there's not too many beats that have been skipped because her husband would definitely let us all know that. Yeah. But it's getting it's getting tight. So she's thinking of an idea of bringing her mom, Mama Wanda, huh, huh. to the house to move in and to help out with the children. Doctor's appointments, picking them up from school, dropping them off at school. Things like that that will help relieve them of some of this tension and some of this of the um, stuff that goes on in the house. Monster was like, absolutely. Yeah, he's not feeling that at all. No. Which I'm feeling because if she anything like, too. if she anything like in the few episodes we saw her, she real outspoken and very opinionated. Yes. Yeah, and he ain't gonna put up with that in his house. Uh -huh. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, she's not the kind of person, Letitia, I love you, but I gotta speak truth on your mama from what we don't see. She ain't the type of person that you can bring in your house and want everything to just keep calm. Yeah. When y'all have an argument, she, she gonna be in the yeah, argument. Yeah, she can't insert herself. Yeah, yeah. she's gonna insert herself in, in y'all business mm -hmm. and that's not good for any marriage. Yeah. And she's going to side with her daughter. Exactly. At all times. Marceau, right? Wrong. Marceau is gonna be the enemy. He's gonna be the enemy. <laughs> he's gonna, be, he's gonna enemy. be a prisoner <laughs> in his own house. Yep. Well, he's gonna never wanna come home. Nope. And he later on was having a conversation with Maurice and Maurice was like, listen, Grandparents, that's what grandparents do. You might want to let her come in the house, do all of it. He was like, well, Hell, it's easy sell for you, yeah. No, no. I said, Maurice, Maurice, uh uh, no, no, maybe down the street where she's close enough, yeah. But Marcel was like, If she doesn't have a definite end, yeah, no, 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 he no, said, no. You know, she come for the weekend, you know, and she can leave after that, but yeah, yeah, and I agree for and, a spending period of time, no. And I, we can speak about it from a person that my mother lives with us. Mm -hmm. But my mom is so different. 
she has her own life. Mm -hmm. She's hardly ever here, to be honest. Like, right. she's really like the third roommate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she comes in late. She cleans during the day while we at work. She does yep. all that stuff. She don't, she don't be in our business. We, we don't really have <laughs> business. But she'll, she don't insert herself into none of our mm -hmm. personal. Exactly. That's a perfect mother-in-law. Yeah. But if you have one that's outspoken like, spoken like Mama Juan. Say, I've been blessed. <laughs> Ooh, and I've been blessed. Because Stella's mama, she don't do none of that stuff either. Nah, uh-uh. She don't, mm -mm. Matter of fact, I think but, she would But that was one of the things that. I used before I, before I married you. I used to be afraid of that, that. It was gonna be a clash in there somewhere, mm. and I know my mom, but you know, I didn't know if she gonna like you, and a probably mm. vice versa. You, you didn't know your mama would like me. Facts, but my family are hard. <clears throat> they hard to yeah. You gotta get jumped out. in. <laughs> and, or sometimes it'll be one or the other. You know, the father will like the daughter, or the mother. I think will your like, father loved yeah, me yeah. first. Oh man, my dad loved this man. Yeah, he matter of fact. They live, to give perspective, they live about 60 to 70 miles yeah. from here. When he was, well, he passed away. Y'all already know about that. But she was said she went through a phase where she was going through back problems. Mm -hmm. He was going to come up here wee hours of the morning to bring her a heating pad. I said, Dad. I'm like, Dad, we, we, I can't we go get a heating yeah, pad. Yeah, we go to the store. And you don't need to be in that kind of pad. Yeah, we, go, we come, we will come over yeah, well, he was gonna he was gonna come up here. He said, "My daughter is a pain. I need to come up." I said, you do way too much. But so that's yeah, how we, much he loved me. So yeah, we've been we've been blessed. We in, have. In that, I couldn't have asked regards. for better. Yeah, better. Mm -hmm. Well, I could, but it's just I need stand a moment and not be so scared. I need her to drive. <laughs> Cause she don't drive nowhere but to work into the grocery store. Yeah. And for that reason, we don't get to see her as much as we would love to, because all of it is the responsibility of us going down there. And y'all know how it is when you work on nine to five, work, do business, we do YouTube. It's hard, y'all. It's hard. Yeah. So yeah. So Marso is. Um, he took Maurice to. Well, he didn't take Maurice. Maurice showed up over there. They don't bought a shopping Mom, center. Yeah, they, yeah. I said y'all making some boss moves for real. And I said I, I like that. I and like it was Letitia's that. idea. And she gonna be there mm -hmm. in an office with right him. beside him with no walls in between. <laughs> My soul was like, you know what? You, you sure that's gonna work? Uh, he's like, I, I, I was uh, trying to. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's a little overkill. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, day in and day out, they got to be some separation sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, and that's a true statement. Because if y'all up underneath each other all day, every day, house and work are going to do like this all mm -hmm. day long. Anybody got no time for that? Yeah. Let's get on these goddamn hopes. Martel and Melody. I'm going to jump around a little bit because I just don't have it to give. I really don't. Because... Of social media playing out before the episodes play out it kind of just makes it hard for you to have a genuine opinion on an episode yeah because of what you see and what you know they don't speak to everything yet yeah so <clears throat> evidently she asked Martel to move out the house right. and him being the narcissist that he is he don't want to leave the house he wants to move on the other side of the house where yeah. he's far enough away where you won't bump into me but I'm close enough where it's still comfortable still for me yeah. and I have access and she was like but what makes you happy but what makes everything convenient for you you're the freaking problem so why am I making it easy for you you need to get out that would have sound really really good but she you pregnant right now baby yeah you pregnant right there so we saw in the episode where Martel ended up in therapy Melody does not know he's in therapy. He said he's going to go through a few sessions and before he know. tells her. And in my mind, now knowing that she asked him to move out, I'm like, is this your last chance to try to fix yourself or prove to your wife that you're trying to fix yourself mm -hmm. so that she doesn't put you out permanently? Mm -hmm. Is this all a mind buck? You know what I'm saying? Because that's what a whole lot of people do when I'm going to leave you. I'm going to do what it takes to get myself together because I'm... So now he's in therapy, and at first I thought the therapist was one of those. I told you the therapist looks just like your dad. He does he not. He do look like your dad. Yes, he do. He look, and that's like he talk like him too. He does talk like him. Talk just like him. So the, the <laughs> therapist was like, 
when he first started speaking, I was like, oh God, like, who is this? You Jack? ain't going to help Jack me. Lane, you know, hi. <laughs> and then when this guy started opening up his mouth and got real with Martel and oh, made Martel man. get real with himself and made him see himself, man. I was like, dude. Yeah, he dropped some, yes. he dropped some hardcore nuggets on him, man. And he was asking, he was like, so what made you cheat? He was talking about so I being with the wrong people at the wrong time. He said, you know, it's okay to say that I made a mistake. Yeah. That I was wrong. Mm -hmm. That I did something terribly bad. It's okay to put the responsibility on yourself yeah. rather than blame someone else. He said, so what was what was it that this lady gave you that your wife didn't give you? He couldn't answer question. He couldn't answer the question. Mm -hmm. So then he picked it back and he went right back around after he done told Martel, you need to look in the mirror. You need to, because the guy admitted, he said, when I first got married, I studied the heck out of my wife. Mm -hmm. But I studied her so much that I forgot to study about myself. Self, yep. So when everything would go wrong in our marriage, I blamed her, her. her. Yep. instead of looking at myself because I didn't know who I was. Well, but so I knew her. He, but he was like, do you know who you are in so many words? Martel couldn't look at himself in that mirror mm -hmm. for a very long time. I nope. noticed. And then he circled back and he said, okay, what was it? about this girl who was she to you and who was she to you <laughs> when this motherfucker said she was a peasant he said he said he said did you really just say that he said wow i said whoa you said that like you really said that out your mouth <laughs> martel did you really just call, call that girl a peasant a peasant that you were with for many years yeah at a least peasant, you know three. At least three. A peasant that you referred to to your wife as your girlfriend. Yeah. And yes. now all of a sudden she's been downgraded to, to a, a peasant. Peasant? I think I think the first thing that popped in his motherfucking head, he just said it. I said peasant? Yeah. Okay. So this it started making me think, because when he said peasant, we all know what a peasant mean, what being a peasant means and all that good stuff. And I said, did he go out there and get one of these chicks? I call them corporate hood. I have a tendency of being corporate hood sometimes. Like I can I, I clean up real good, but I get real gutter with it too. I think that's what Martel went out there in the streets and got. He got somebody that was that was gutter enough that they ain't scared to lose what they got. Mm. But classy enough where if you ever get attached to his name, he don't look bad about it. Mm. But she's not at the <clears> level <throat> of Melody. She's not at the level of a Martel. He's not at the level of his friends. Like her social circle is probably way different than his. So he thinks of her as being a peasant. I don't know. Cause I was this, like, this is some bullshit. This girl got to be doing something right. To have him strung along for three years. He is emotionally he was, involved yeah, with that Yeah, it was not no freaking hit it or quit it. Mm -mm, three years? Three years is no hit it or quit it. And that's not a peasant. And then this is this this is the part that made me be like, Martel, there is some marbles floating around in that head of yours that needs some, some realigning. He said, basically, I thought that I would be better than my friends and those that were around me that were cheating on their wives if I narrowed it down to one female. It's like, what? <laughs> now I will give you that, that it does sound a whole lot better when it's one and not 50, because numbers matter. But <laughs> this is what we doing here. Nah, cheating is cheating. Cheating whether, is whether cheating. Whether it's one or half of a one. No, no, no. It's cheating. I mean, it is. Cheating is cheating. But would you rather hear that I cheated with one person or I don't went out there and slept with ten? I got you now. Yeah. Yeah, one does sound better, <laughs> but it's still cheating. It's still cheating. No, don't get hurt any less. But I, we can so you're trying to be the best cheater. I'm trying to be the best cheater. I'm trying I can to be, be the best cheater. I'm trying to be a moral cheater. Mm. I'm narrowing it down to one. You can't be that mad at me. I just had one. I just had one pain on the side now. <laughs> and, and he said that like he was so right. Yeah, he, like he felt good about it. I just had one. Yep. That therapist was looking at him like, we got a real deal narcissist but, on our hands. But see, we got another problem at hand too, because I'm pretty sure that his friends are watching the show and their wives are watching the show. So, so they're gonna be like, uh, is it you? What, yeah, what are you talking about? You are here cheating? You got him. In, he got one. Him and you got. 
But we learned through the episode that from when we left, left off with them the last time, they had a good six months of being good. Mm -hmm. They were fine. They were in the car. They were headed up to Atlanta. Atlanta. And, um, you know, usually crazy stuff happened in Atlanta. They got it on the way to Atlanta. <laughs> got a telephone call from a blocked number. He said, if I didn't answer it, it was going to be a problem. And clearly answering it was a problem because mm -hmm. it was the chick. He said, I hadn't talked to her in six months. And then we started regaining communication after that six months. Now, the way he was trying to spin it to the therapist seemed as if she just called him. Out the blue. Out the blue. And it was done after that. Yeah. I don't think Melody would have reacted the way that she did. Because really, in all fairness, you can't help who calls. Yeah, you can't control a call. You yeah. can't control a call. So for you to go off and do all and do and go talk to a divorce lawyer because she did that to see what her rights was and all of that. To do all of that over a phone call, I don't think it ended. Yeah. Because that really wasn't on him. But it seemed like it reactivated the connection. Yeah. And that's what happened. So we're going to see. What next week's going to be, but Carlos King, I love you, but um, what I don't want to do, I don't want to deal with my tells on Wayward Dick every week. <laughs> I really don't. Certainly when I see that it's Wayward Dick, got to be quite friendly. Yep. Because, yeah, straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty sound. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.